The film is called Is Told to God Thyself. People can watch this here on Apple Music and it's a beautiful and powerful piece of work. Debut at Sundance Festival, uh, which must have been a great moment for you to see it in, yeah. in a big screen and be a part of an experience like that and know that it's not just about music or improv or live or whatever, that there are layers and there's expansive po- possibility to what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, because film is such a... I mean, music is definitely a collaborative art form, but film is like a really collaborative definitely art form because you really take your precious art and you hand it over to someone and they want the trust to be able to interpret it you, yeah. the other thing is you can't sit there necessarily and direct the director no 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 and I, and I didn't i tried not to because i trusted them yeah i relocated myself to really just speaking about what the music meant to me because for me like you create things that we see and i want to let you create something beautiful with this and the film is it really is the fourth part of the album it's like, there's heaven earth the choice mm-hmm. and that's told to god herself i reformulate the music in a lot of ways to fit the film and when i did that to the music they then wanted to change the film again and then i changed the music again <laughs> and, like, and then we saw Stop. the paradox the paradox started we had to like you know we had yeah. to like you know open up a black hole to pull it back out you know yeah are you sort of uh, are you sort of uh, are you open to collaboration again? Given that you've got your hands full with all the creativity that's floating around you right now, are you always is the is the door is open for you to work with people? Oh yeah, always, always. The the collaboration happens and then a year and a half later it comes out. It comes out. You probably didn't even know that you were on to Pimper Butterfly until to Pimper <laughs> Butterfly came out. That's what everyone else tells me. Everyone else who's on their record was like, I found out the day it came out. Oh yeah, well because there was so much music that got put on there. Yeah, I mean because Kendrick to me he, he's a, he's a full-fledged, bona fide genius to also be so open to let us pour our whole cup into the pot. He recognized that in his own city, yeah. this thing had been building and aside from your own environment, which you had created, had not been tapped into from outside of that environment to bring it into a different world, right? Yeah. We had all become masters of sneaking in the really cool stuff that we could do. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you go to artists and they're like, they're like, I just want this little drop of what you have. And you're like, I'm going to give you what you asked for mm. and I'm going to sneak in a little piece of this thing that you really want. This is what this is what's going to make it. Extra cool. special, yeah. When I went in to work with Kendrick, it was like, you know, I never get terrible. Like, nah, man, you don't have to sneak it in. You could just pull out the whole rock. I'm like, the rock is big as a building. I can't, pull, I can't bring the rock in here. Like, no, nah, man, bring in the rock, the whole rock, that, the mountain. Yeah, bring the mountain in here. It's like, he's like, I got my mountain in here. <laughs> so does Thundercat. There's like, this whole, I'm looking around. I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. And that's cool. I'm like, yeah, it's cool to have someone that would allow you to really, really be your full creative self. That's how you tap into the anti. You know, that's how you tap into what you wouldn't do. Let someone else bring something that, like, oh, I wouldn't have thought to do that. You know, you've you've gotten to work with some incredible artists throughout your life. You know, to get a chance to collaborate or to work alongside someone like Herbie Hancock, what is that like, and how did that how did that leave a mark on your life? It's surreal. I still feel the need to introduce myself every time I see Herbie. Like, hello, Mr. Hancock. Uh, you may not remember me. Like, come on, see, I know who you are. <laughs> and so it's like when you when you spent so much of your life studying someone. Yeah. You know, I, be, I remember being 13, 14 years old, and just Herbie Hancock was like way up there on the mountain. Like, I never imagined that I'd be up there at some point making music with him. And so, you know, I remember the first time I played, really got to really play with him. It was at Disney Hall. I was like, Herbie, you're about to get 100% of what I have because I don't know if this is ever going to happen again. <laughs> and I just remember like sitting there and just thinking like he's definitely tapped into that anti-verse because like every option, everything I wanted to do, it was like, it was like a doorway. It's like, I want to go up there and look up and there's a doorway and there's a doorway there and there's a doorway there. And it was, and it was, it was inspiring because one, someone who's done that much but is still searching to do more. It was like, okay, so this journey never really ends. 